Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Mercury is back, and this is my new love it's called Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Uh, it's pretty much taken over my life. I'm pretty sure I got 60 hours in this plus. Anyways, um, yeah. I did another video. I'm probably going to upload it on what I like about the game, although my voice is pretty low in it, but <clears throat> it'll probably have to do because I don't want to re record it. I um, forget what level I was in, but I'm level 20 now, getting closer to the third upgrade for the garage and the paint booth. I can't wait because I got a few cars restored, um, except for the body. You, can't res you can replace panels and they're black, but you can't paint them and all this rust doesn't go away until you get into the welding, I believe. Uh, but here I am picking up, I found a Bandit Trans Am, which is called Chieftain, uh, Chieftain Bandit. I guess they couldn't get lic licensing from uh, Pontiac, so uh, this is as close as you can get to a Trans Am. You can definitely tell it was a Trans Am, no questions. It's T-top, the roof line. This is a 77-78 Trans Am uh, because of this nose cone. Uh, the tra interior definitely mimics Pontiac, so I can't open it. It's on the hoist, uh, but you can see through the window it's definitely TA. Uh, the two big round gauges. I actually have one of these cars in real life. It's a 1981, um, but pretty much the same body style. Nose cone's a little different. I love how they kept the 77 uh, license plate between the tail lights, like it would be in 77 or 8. Actually, pre 78. Um, as soon as they hit 79, they went with the straight across tail lights, which I actually like more, but uh, they kept it era specific, which I really like. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably not going to touch that in this video. I want to save that for later, but I wanted to talk about a few things that I noticed. I don't know, maybe it's common knowledge, but I didn't know this. Um, I Basically, for now, I'm picking up my cars in the junkyard, uh, as you can tell. Um, but I had no idea that there was different versions of the same car. I don't know if it's a different version or just cars come with different engines this is a bolt Atlanta trespasser there was three of these in the boneyard when I got there three of them and each one of them had a different engine in it I it was the first I realized because when I went up to the first one and I've been bypassing these cars as soon as I see them because right now I want to deal with V8 engines and most of the time I'd open the hood and it was an inline six and I said that's a shame these cars should definitely have a V8 option uh, and then I found three of them in the same boneyard. Uh, the first one was again an inline six. Um, opened the hood. The hood was off the second one, and I noticed that it was a V8 engine, not this V8, but it was the single carb overhead valve, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, anyways, both cars sat lower. Then I f came around the corner, and the stance on this thing from across the yard is said, that looks like a four-wheel drive of some sort and when I came up to it I said oh my god uh, it's not four by four not that I know of I haven't put it on the hoist yet but I don't see an axle in there uh, but it definitely sits higher with off-road tires now I don't know if it's the tires doing it or if they actually made it this high and uh, here it's got the triple deuce setup 390 horsepower engine and I was like wow that's that's the highest um, horsepower I've seen out of these anyways um, so yeah I, that was complete news to me and I just couldn't resist myself I had to pick this bad boy up you can definitely tell it's modeled after 66 Chevelle even though it's called an Atlanta uh, it's got Chevelle interior SS interior I might add uh, uh, it's um, 66 I'm not sure if the Pretty sure the dash was like that in 66 for an SS. Yes, yes it was. I'm pretty positive. Anyways, you can tell it's definitely 66 Chevelle. The grill cuts into the fender, where a 67 would be off. Um, so I guess it's a 66 El Camino, basically, with Chevelle front end. <coughs> um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, 
that's this. And uh, if you guys knew that already, or if you know something else, or if I'm giving you false information, please let me know in the comments or something. Because uh, oh, even the door—I didn't even notice that even the door panel is uh, an SS will go up and down. It's pretty close with the straight up tuck and roll. Huh. Cool. Anyway, so I want to move this to the hoist because I'd like to tear it down today. And uh, yeah, I'd really like to tear this down. Oh God, what a beast this is going to be! I don't, I don't know if these are normally like this or if this is maybe a patch. I, I haven't seen one before. Then again, I, I'm fairly still fairly new to the game, so um, too much to take out of this bad boy. It's a shame it's going to sit with rust on it for a very long time. Oops. Uh, disassemble. Disassemble. Mm, that's it. I liked how they had bucket seats in here mimicking an SS. I wonder if there is a bench seat option for it. Wow. So yeah, these are definitely bigger tires, and I wonder if that is what's actually sitting this car up higher, or if they purposely made this sit higher, because it sure does look like the suspension sits lower, but again, I don't know if it's the tires doing that, or if it was designed this way to look like a four-wheel drive. Either way, it is definitely not a 4x4. Four four. There's no front axle. I'm definitely liking this, uh, liking this car though. This is going to be one of my favorites. I don't even know if I want to get rid of this one. Oops. So we're just going to start tearing it away, piece by piece. Oh, control arm, that'll have to do. This is uh, definitely my my end game. I don't know if there is a beating the game. I guess I know there's a lot of story modes and stuff like that. But uh, my end game is just uh, finding rarer cars. Like this one I would assume would be more rare than your average uh, El Camino. Which is, again, basically what I'm looking for. Uh, rare cars. Uh, I hope they bring in a tuning option or a way that you can customize more. Because I'm loving this game. Um, I never got to play Motor City Online, but I wish they would develop this into some sort of uh, Motor City Online, like MCMO uh, or MCO, uh, but it uh, was a multiplayer online game where you got to share uh, your cars and go out and race them against other people. Uh, there was a little meet and greet, meet and greet everywhere or anywhere. Bah, sorry little meet and greet area where you could go and share your car and, you know the graphics were well good for its day but um, pretty well atrocious compared to today's standards but if they took that game and just added a few elements to this like multiplayer racing and maybe one common area where you could go uh, and hang out with other people could show up with their rides of course then you're gonna re would hope they would add more custom elements so that you, you know your trespasser or bolt atlanta doesn't look like the next guy's only difference is color uh, you know maybe different custom grills custom colors uh, paint schemes engines i really hope they put engine swaps in here because this chassis obviously accepts three different engines i don't see why if you bought one with the six owner you couldn't upgrade it to a v8 um, another thing I wish that they would do is allow you to just put bare blocks on the engine stand without having to put it in a car first. I don't know if they plan to do that in the future, but that would be really nice because i got a few blocks in storage. I would like to build my motor ahead of time so when it comes time to do a restoration like this, then it's, uh, you know, just pull the motor instead of having to tear it down and rebuild it and would make videos like this much quicker, just tear it apart and throw throw down a new engine in her already pre rebuilt if you would um, yeah but I never got to play any other version of this um, like uh, 
uh, CMS 2015. I don't know if there was another version before that. I'm really not 100% sure. Uh, overhead valve deal, I have to remember that. Uh, but yeah, basically I never got to uh, to play anything but this one. This is my first car mechanic simulator. Uh, and I'm definitely liking it. Uh, read on, I never watched any videos on CMS 2015, but uh, I've seen online some people are saying there's a lot more um, customization, move stuff around your garage, make it look different. I hope that's something that they would soon, or not soon, but plan to implement into this game because I am definitely loving this game. Definitely one of my favorites so far. I hope not to hit the end of the game and say, oh, building all those cars was for nothing. Uh, be really disappointing. There's a couple games that have done that to me, wondering, you know, no multiplayer, no nothing, so you don't get to really show your cars off unless it's on a forum or something. It makes it kind of boring after a while once you hit your end game. Uh, like right now, if they had other people online, um, you know, one, one good idea would be like, <clears throat> obviously I can't do body work to my car yet, um, but there's a couple of cars that I would gladly pay another player or something to do for me until I'm able to do it myself. It would give, uh, you know, you pay them money, they paint your car because you're not able to. I think that would be something that would be great. Obviously, it wouldn't last very long. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm almost... I'm, I'm over 50 hours. Uh, now, I do a lot of junkyard uh, hunting and stuff too, so uh, that could be a lot of hours wasted towards leveling up that I could have spent, but I play the game the way I want to play it. And, you know, uh, to me, if you're not playing the way you want to play and you're just grinding, then it kind of makes the game not fun anymore. Uh, but yeah, right now, so it would be really great to have another player uh, paint my GTO that's just sitting there, and my Mustang is there, do the body work, you know, you pay them however much it would be, I don't know, but they give you a price and do all the body work and uh, paint the car in your color of choice. I think that would be something really fun to do. Uh, would give me, I'd be able to either then choose now, I could sell the car the way it is, I know I could make money on it right now, but I, I hate to, I'm storing it because I hate to keep, hate to sell a car full of rust, uh, it's kind of like in real life, I would hate to sell a rusty, rusty car, and I'll, I want to see them done, you know, especially the first one I've restored of the Mustang and the GTO, it was the very first, so I want to paint them, have my vision come to life, so to speak. And then I'll decide if I want to keep them or sell them. Really, money's not incredibly hard to make, so I don't really have the need to sell it. Other than probably to make room later on. Um, now that I know that they make different versions of cars, I would, I'll would i be on the hunt for different versions of uh, all the cars. You know, the most powerful engine or the rarest one. I really love this triple deuce setup. Oh, that just looks so sick. I've always wanted one in real life. Um, even dual quads, but there is something about an orange Chevy small block with triple deuces sitting on top. I've never set one up in real life, but I heard they can be real finicky because uh, obviously you're trying to tune three carbs. I love how they added that linkage in there. That is great. Trying to tune three carbs instead of one. I wonder if that's a different card variator number. Oh. It's off with the intake we go. Angled bolts just like a small block Chevy. This is definitely modeled after a small block Chevy except the distributor is at the front of the engine where a GM is always in the back. That's more like a Ford setup. Uh, but the straight up and down thermostat and it's definitely, in my opinion, modeled after small block shafts. Square port heads are, you know, not really, but anyways. They can't, obviously, have every detail right as much as we would love it. I wish GM would have gave them up a license, or maybe they just chose not to go after licensing because of the cost. I noticed with the DLC, I haven't got it yet, but I noticed they have Dodge and Mazda in there. Actually, Dodge Charger, Dodge challenger i believe you know 
so I guess they got licensing there, and obviously from Mazda, I don't know if it was GM wouldn't give and Ford wouldn't give up licensing. It's a real shame. I don't see what it would hurt, or maybe they wanted too much to give the licensing up. Huh, I guess there's no rod. Uh, well, that makes the disassembly a little easier. It's definitely missing some. Oh. What is in the way here? Why can't I back? Oh, there we go. Ah, the alternator. Alternator from an inline six. Huh. That's another um, GM quality that they used to have. Is uh, pretty much anything small block will fit on anything small block. Um, right through to the late 80s. And even into the early 90s, sometimes you can take a, uh, you know, convert a small block a throttle body 350 to carburetor, no problem. The starter still work uh, for the most part. They are still the same engine. A little bit different intakes on them, obviously, because it's multi port. A fuel pump on the side, right, like a small block Chevy. Oh, God, I love this game. Oh, that's part of the block. I can't. I guess I can't remove that. Can't remove that. I guess it's just the block left. Oh, no, the camshaft. Let's take the camshaft out. Um, should we take the crank out? That's what the other piston is first. Uh, so we'll drop the crank out of this bad boy. Do you have to do that? Oh, I gotta do it from underneath. Brutal. That's where I prefer to do it on the stand, but I have to try to repair this block first to save me. I don't know how much the block's worth, but probably enough. Enough to make it worthwhile trying to repair it. Well, after this is out. There she is, bare bones. Everything you can take off of this, you can take off. There's nothing. I don't know how. I can't. I don't have a clock up. See how long this video is, but um, I don't know if I'm keeping you entertained to that extent. But I'm gonna go till the end. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Uh, that's good. Always the cheap parts. Come on. Yeah, the heads are good. Axle good. Good. Water pump. Don't really care. It's cheap. Don't care. It's cheap. Don't care. It's cheap. Oh, the head. We failed the head. I see that. Intake. I think I have uh, one of these. Transmission we get. That's good. Looks like we're buying a carb or two, and it didn't even give me a chance to repair that block. Is it that bad, or I don't know how they go. 255, 70, 14, that's all it was on that. They looked much bigger. I would like to up the tire size on it. If we're going to make it look like a 4x4 four four and sit like a 4x4, four four, I'm going to put a little taller tire, like a 285. I don't know how that's going to work yet. If it looks, if it's shoving itself through the fender or something, I won't bother but that's a shame. I guess we have to buy an engine block. Anyways, I think I'm probably getting to the point where this video is way too long. Um, yeah, I'm just pushing on 19 minutes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here and then I'm going to do... Uh, the restoration in sections, like maybe uh, the engine and a, well, we'll take it piece by piece and, and see how it goes. Anyways, guys, then uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Um, if you liked it, leave a comment, or if you play, leave a comment. I like to talk to pretty much anyone about this game. It would be great. And, uh, yeah, so uh, have a good day.